Happy Hispanic Heritage Month from NPR. And what better way to show your respect for someone else's culture than by trying to erase its language and alter its structures? Latinx? As if words ending in O's and A's don't exist in Spanish due to gender? No, chauvinistic outsiders are going to erase all that, burn it to the ground. You know, to show you what respect they have for your culture. Well, so much for Latinx Month from NPR more like NPC. And speaking of NPCs, I was wondering more about their contradictions. In this case, about the contradiction of pretending to celebrate someone's culture while trying to destroy their culture. We've talked about this before. The contradictions which are served up to NPCs is a form of what behavioral psychologist Ivan Pavlov called behavioral disorganization. This term derives from discovering how to induce insanity in an animal. Pavlov, in his famous dog experiments, discovered that he could induce neurosis in canines by giving them contradictory instructions. Get up, sit down, get up, sit down, etc. The dog would end up running in circles, going crazy. Two of Pavlov's assistants named Vygotsky and Luria actually developed the concept of behavioral disorganization and studied how to apply it to humans. They were later invited by behavioral scientists in America to come over here to embed it in our school system. People like Edward Thorndike welcomed them. He's the one who famously said, children shouldn't be educated. They should be trained, like animals. This was the behavioral psychologist's form of social control, dog training for humans, embedding trigger words in kids like how they did in poodles or collies. A trigger word is something like racist. The second they hear it, they go into a conditioned response, a trance. Their brain shuts off. They just start muttering, punch a Nazi, punch a Nazi, punch a Nazi. There's a whole menu of hypnotic trigger words embedded into them so that the unscrupulous mesmerist can control his subjects. At any rate, one of the techniques to break down a child, to dislodge his parents' values, and to upload the new mental malware is behavioral disorganization. And this is rendered possible by flooding them with contradictory messaging. Some of the messages we covered before, like premise A, races don't exist, but premise B, white people are evil. Well, if races don't exist, how can white people exist? Another premise was A, men can't have an opinion on abortion because they don't have a womb, but premise B, men can be women. And a new one I noticed is premise A, we're all the same, there are no differences between us. Yet premise B, we need to enact diversity hiring because different perspectives help an organization. But wait, if race doesn't exist and we're all the same, why would we need diversity initiatives to get all these people who allegedly think differently based on melanin levels? This contradiction, of course, works with gender as well. They'll say premise A, there are no gender differences, and then premise B, we need more women on corporate boards to take advantage of their different thoughts and intellectual abilities. One comic hinted at this contradiction obliquely. A corporation needs 50% male board members and 50% female board members, and you see all the NPCs cheer. Then he says, a child needs a mother and a father, and then you watch them scowl. The reason? They're told that 50% female board members are necessary, but intact nuclear families are not. Another contradiction is feminists saying that men are violent because they were born with higher testosterone, yet should be changed with recourse to education to cure them of their toxic masculinity. Yet gays who were born that way should never be changed, and to try to change them is in fact an act of abuse. How come this born that way talking point only applies to one group and not the other? Like the behavioral disorganization exemplified in this series of contradictory tweets. Don't give up on the Constitution just yet. One brave federal judge just secured due process and equal protection for thousands of people. Then he pivots when he doesn't like the ruling. Who should decide whether air passengers must wear masks? A federal agency staffed with experts accountable to the president who was accountable to the people? Or a 35-year-old judge in Tampa? So basically, when the courts give him what he wants, they're good. When they don't give him what he wants, they're an affront to what he calls democracy. By the way, even in this meme, there's yet another contradiction. The left claims that it's for the underdog, the oppressed, the little guy. But now how he makes an appeal to authority and says that we should all just shut up and listen to the experts and let them run our lives. The powerful, the elite, the privileged. I'm for the oppressed, says the leftist, but the oppressed should just shut up and listen to George Soros's fact checkers or Pfizer's opinions on bodily autonomy or an unelected bureaucratic technocratic elite funded by billionaire oligarchs. So yeah, they're really for the powerless and they prove it by only obeying the powerful and the powerful only. The rest of us unwashed plebes are unqualified. At any rate, the right makes a fundamental error when they think that they'll own the libs by pointing out their contradictions. They fundamentally don't understand something. When power is the goal, then consistency is irrelevant. Consistency only matters when truth is your end goal. But leftists don't believe in objective truth. In other words, they believe in lying to attain what they want. Why? Because truth is not their goal. Power is. It's why they'll invoke Jesus after telling you that they're atheists and that your religion is dumb. 
Why would they invoke someone that they don't even believe in? Because they know that you believe in him. And they're willing to lie just to get what they want, to manipulate, to con. Jesus didn't own a gun, so why should you? They don't play by the Marquis of Queensbury rules. Conservatives fundamentally don't understand this. It's why the left and right are always talking past each other. One side is playing checkers, the other side is playing chess. One side thinks that truth is the end goal, while the other side thinks that power is the end goal. And while contradiction is an obstacle to truth, it is no obstacle to power. Does it ever feel like you're not getting the full story from the media? Like there are dark and powerful forces behind the scenes manipulating national and world events? You're right on both counts. To get the full story every time, check out Behind the Deep State, hosted by Alex Newman from The New American. 